Hey there, boys and girls. This is Brad Wilson for Poker VIP. Thanks for tuning in to my latest episode. Today's going to be some more mid stakes action. Looks as if I have some hands on my opponents for this session, so we will have some data. We will have some information to use. The three seat has been at the bottom left table. He's not very happy with me already. I've I've stacked him twice, and he's he he's been calling me a fish for I think the last uh, thirty minutes or so. That's that's why this session uh, tends to stand out in my mind. Limping queen five suited at the top left, getting five to one against against a fish in the the one seat. One thing to take into consideration when you're playing against a fish is he's going to be passive. The more passive your opponents are are the less the p position means he he's just he's not going to put a lot of pressure on us he's going to play his hand pretty fit or fold so no real problem limping from the small blind there with pretty much any two suited cards turning a flush draw betting out since the one seat check back like i said he's playing pretty fit or fold just going to get a lot of folds from him Hope everybody's had a very good week, enjoying the summer, the great weather. Personally, I'm super excited for the fall. I'm ready for, for the cool cool wind. I'm going to go on a lot of walks. Walking helps me clear my head, get my mind right before I play poker. I think there are, there are a lot of things you can do that helps with your mental strength before you actually put in a poker session. And those things are, are just super vital. Getting good sleep, exercising, eating right, taking care of yourself. Poker is a very mentally strenuous activity. Looks like our friend at the bottom left just doubled up. Good news for us. We would love to, you know, go to war with him for round three and, and see what happens. I assume if we bust him for a third time, he's, uh, <laughs> if we bust him a third time, he's, he's going to go off on us for a good 10 minutes straight. Could have led with the King 10. Going to be a, a tricky spot if the button bets, and I don't think the button's going to be betting a ton. Since he bet minimum that's just going to be an easy raise for protection. Don't think he's going to have a ton of ton of flopped flushes. Turning the ace high straight at the top left or the the queen high straight, I mean. Um, no reason no reason to raise the two seat. We you always want to keep your opponents in the pot when they could have bluffs, like in that that instance. If we raise him on the turn, we don't get that extra bet on the river. And also, villain's range is protected some by, by King Jack. So if he does have the nuts, we don't want to raise and, and have him fold all of his bluffs and jam all of the hands that we're basically drawing super slim against. Like I said at the bottom left, uh, <laughs> three seat doubled up and said that was that was for me. So he definitely he does not like us one bit. Calling with a nut flush draw at the bottom right. I think we do have some showdown equity at this point. Two, there are two busted flush draws. There are a bunch of busted straight draws. If villain did bet, we're probably calling a river. We have a fish at the top right table limping in. Shouldn't be isolating with a7, but it is worth a limp from the small blind getting 7 to 1. If we do have a hand like 
queen jack off. Not a not a hand that I would normally raise from the small blind with, but against two fish who are limping, I do want to I do want to build a pot. I want to make the stack to pot ratio less so that when we flop top pair, we can just bet bet get it in. Queen jack and, and king queen and king jack, they are going to have a lot of their hands dominated because they're just simply playing way too many hands. And if we brick if we brick the flop, we're never bluffing versus the fish. We're basically raising raising to get it in for two bets post flop. Flatting with the eights at the bottom left. No reason to dissuade the six seat. Make him make him fold. Queen 10, gutter ball, plus flush draw with an over card. This villain is betting flops a little too often. We want to raise and just get it in. I think I remember this hand. This, this was a super annoying spot for us. If villain has ace jack, we have the odds to call. If villain has queen jack, we do not. If villain has two pair, we do not. Super close one way or the other. I don't think you can really go wrong by folding or calling. If villain has a uh, higher flush draw, that's not good for us. If villain has a lower flush draw, obviously going to be great for us. As it was, a villain sort of lucked into the line that makes your hair turn a little gray, uh, a little grayer. He didn't. We he we we put in an extra bet on the flop, and we didn't get to realize all of our equity heading into the river. Guy with reg stats limping under the gun at the bottom right. Don't really know what to make of that. He is the same guy who's like betting men into, you know, like one tenth pot size bets. So this is uh, an example to me of a, an incognito fish. Just a guy whose stats look okay at first glance, but he's just going to be a fish. His decision making post flop is not going to be. To the standard of a uh, of a normal mid stakes regular. At, the, at our top left table, it looks like the six seat is going to be pretty nitty. The two seat is obviously obviously our fish. Where that guy's a lot of value for the table, sitting with a full stack. Eleven hands isn't going to really tell a true or real story about the six seat. He could be. His frequencies could be much, much higher. I mean, he just stole one time, and now all of a sudden he's 17-17 with 100% steal. So, Good lesson in um, stats not meaning a super ton over, over very small sample sizes. At the top left table, super small 3-bet by the 1-seat. That's, uh, that's a bet that if I were the 6-seat, I would be 4-betting pretty liberally can't imagine that that is for that has a lot of value in, in it not the greatest of turn cards at the bottom right for our current hand or for our overall range 
villain should be able to to bluff at that card to bet that card pretty pretty liberally fold out most of our range besides our i guess if we do have some like a seven of hearts or a seven of spades um flush draws with overs would be would be hands that we stick around with but as it were with villain having ace deuce i, I think he's just got to bet that turn He's got to bet the turn. If we do call the turn, he needs to, to bet the river as well and, and turn his deuce into, into a bluff. That's going to be just a way more profitable line than trying to check it down. Because if, if I have like pocket eights there or something like that, then or ace tray, uh, just hands that in my mind are very lacking in showdown value he's gonna fold those out um and i and when he doesn't i'm just when he doesn't bet i'm just gonna accidentally beat him one concept that's super important to think about super important to instill in yourself is even though you may have some showdown equity there are going to be spots where your fold equity far outweighs your showdown equity, which makes it right to bluff versus calling. It takes a while to, to discern what those spots are. It takes repetition. It takes really thinking about, about the spots very in-depth, acclimating, acclimating yourself to do so, and then performing. Fold equity is so... It's just such a nebulous concept. We get like it, it's hard to it's hard to define. It's hard to know. It's it's a very individual type thing versus specific players. And I think that that fear of the unknown, not knowing how much fold equity equity we have against certain players, makes us not pull the trigger whenever it's clearly right that we should pull the trigger. Through betting the jack seven off at the top left. Obviously not working out so well, getting cold four bet by the six seed. Three bet at the top left because our hand doesn't have much value. We haven't been three betting a ton. Felt that, you know, we could get one we could get one past them, pick up pick up five big blinds with the three bet bluff. If the six seed is aware of uh, the frequency with which the population three bets a cutoff raise from the button, then it's cold four bet. I really like it. I think it's going to be very profitable long term. Especially at our depths. He, you know, we're 150 deep. He can put a lot of pressure on us post flop, even if we do just flat. Which leads me to think, what's our what's our flatting range there when Villain does cold four bet? I think with with our depth, if we're two hundred bigs deep, if the six seed has eight hundred in front of them, I think we can call pretty wide, and then on a wide variety of boards, really put pressure on him. It's going to be it's really tough for villains to to hold up under the pressure when the depth. When the stack depth gets gets really deep and the boards get get pretty scary, so if we are flatting with our suited connectors, with our pocket pairs, with our ASEX suiteds, we really need we really need to realize that it's a spot that on certain board textures like six, seven, eight, or monotone boards, we can just apply tons of pressure and fold out most of villain's cold four betting range. Again, it's not. That's not a scenario that's going to happen with just one raise or one bet. Generally, we're going to have to fire multiple shells. It requires uh, a pretty big commitment of our stack. And again, that's why 
people are hesitant to do it. They just they want to realize their equity. Everybody feels comfortable when they have the nuts and they just shove and get paid off. Like that's that's great. Any any poker player can do that. That's that doesn't take very much skill. Opening 3x at the bottom left because of the fish and the big blind. Want to play pots against him in position going to be opening 3x with our entire range also fun to bust him with a hand like queen 7 off getting 3 bet tiny with jack deuce off I think that in this spot the jack deuce off is a 4 bet like four betting more than I like calling, although it's really hard to f it's really hard to fold getting such great odds. Betting turn on the double flush draw board. I think villain does have a decent amount of flush draws. He's going to raise us with his value on the turn. He's playing so nitty. Also think that if we get called on the turn, we're prob there's a chance we're winning, there's a chance we're not. Probably gonna be bluffing the front door flush draw against villain's range. Don't think he's gonna be playing check call, check call with the dry flush draw. Hits our range, makes it very hard for him to continue even with his uh his whatever whatever if he has a small over pair if he has like ace nine which was top pair top kicker something like that we can we can just apply a lot of pressure if the uh if the draws if the front door flush draw comes in i think most players inclination is to to be afraid of of the front door flush draw we don't want to bet it but you re, you have to take into consideration how often does villain have front door flush draw so we floated out of position with the queen jack at the top left that villain is c betting 91 percent of the time we block king queen we block queen jack we block king queen we block king jack um i think he's just he, he's betting way too often we wanted to we wanted to flat the flop and then and then have the turn go check check bet the river and pick up the pot unfortunately he bet again when we did pick up equity so we couldn't really fold getting 4 to 1 plus plus the potential that a queen or jack are good and he has about $80 left so effectively 6 to 1 Didn't um, didn't think that the five seat was gonna overcall the flop, as well. That really put a put a kink in our plan. But there was a plan there. We weren't just calling the flop with uh, queen jack high. Sometimes on dry boards, when we're out of position, we can get away with an out of position float. Makes our story very believable. Too bad our fish left at the bottom left. He must have gotten back up to where he started and decided to call it a three minutes or so and you know may jump on as the four seat or the six seat at our bottom left table one thing's for sure they they make it back up to even and they don't just disappear to the night they always return
I hope everybody has it, it is enjoying my video. We're about two thirds of the way done. I wanna I wanna talk about for a minute my my own website www.enhanceyouredge.com. I like to provide lots of value for anybody that I create content for, whether it be Poker VIP or my personal website, Enhance Your Edge. I want to do my best to, to help everybody as much as I possibly can. If you go to my website, sign up for my newsletter list, you get access to 20, or I think it's 17 or 18 right now. Eventually, it'll be 20 free videos in my video vault. I'll give you the password. They can't be found anywhere else. You can also post on our forums, join in discussions. I respond to forum posts personally. So if you want my personal opinion and spots that are causing you some, some problems, then just hit me up on our forums and, and, and you know, join the discussion. Three betting with the ace nine at the top right. We can three bet that some. We can call it some. We can even fold it against the, the right players. C betting the eights, trying to basically grab our equity while we have it. Think that villain's going to fold most of his non ace type hands. I assume that he had a pocket pair there or like a six seven suited type hand. He seems he, he's folding 67% to see bet so far. So when villains play fit or fold, we can use our C bets to just gather up more information. Ace deuce at the bottom left. Not going to give that guy any action until until we have at least a pair six seat at the bottom right table is just going bananas and ten andy's already built this stack up 600 first one was a cooler that one probably flopped a set i didn't really catch all the action but I would say he he had a lot of value in his range from from what I could tell. King queen off at the bottom right. Going to be three betting the one seed for value, or I should be rather. We can also call, but I would rather three bet king queen for value against a guy opening so much. Generally, when players are sitting there with a stack like that, they they have some leaks, some regular fishy leaks. And the, the fishy leaks are they call too many three bets, they play too passively, and occasionally their brain, brain breaks and they just, they call way too much. They, they make mistakes by calling. And so we can three bet our king queen for value. When we flop a pair, we can just bet, bet, bet for value. Somehow the fish always rationalize that if it's a queen high board I just have ace king. If it's a king high board I just have ace ten. The fish are, I would say they're very optimistic players. They always, they always think that I could have the one hand that they beat. Cold four betting the ace queen suited. If he jams, we're folding. Since he flatted, we're check giving up. Villain has lots of value in his range with this stack to pot ratio in position. He has all aces, all over pairs, kings, queens, jacks, tens. No reason to fire a C bet out. I don't think it goes through as much as it as it needs to.
I know it seems kind of weak to just check fold ace queen there, but we also play aces the same. We play kings the same. So our range is protected. They can't just be they can't just be randomly bluffing us there. Or they can, but it's not gonna, we're not going to be super exploitable. It's not going to be like a ridiculously profitable spot for them. And since players' tendency is to, to flat four bets in position with their with their overpairs, I think that you know cold four betting a cutoff cutoff raise button three bet cold four betting our suited connectors is not going to be the worst strategy. We fold out a lot of their bluffs, and when they do flat behind with their overpairs and in the top of their range, we have we have a shot of winning. We have a better shot of winning with 9-10 suited than we do with ace-deuce off. It's always nice to be able to, to, to have some equity to draw to. If we call 4-bet king-queen off, it's a lot harder to continue than a 9-10 suited because on a queen-high board, what do we do? On a king-high board, what do we do? How do we feel with two bets left? on a king or queen high board when we've cold four bet and the guy's flatted in position. We feel pretty crappy, but if we flop a flush draw, if we flop an open and straight draw, we feel much better about checking flop, getting a chance to realize some equity for free. When we do hit, it is, uh, it is a little bit more disguised. And villains don't have tons of information on us because Bovada is anonymous. So one of the, the perks of playing on an anonymous side is villains don't have historical data to use against you. No, they, they can't see that, that I'm cold forebetting my suited connectors because to them it's just a population read. Through betting 6-7 off at the top left. Villain has folded 100% C-bets. I'm C-betting 4% over 100 hands. Pretty high percentage play right there. It's important to note that when I am 3-betting there, I'm 3-betting pretty polarized. Hands that, like 6-7 off, the Jack-7 off earlier, hands that don't have a a lot of playability post flop aren't going to be dominating any part of his range, or a very small part of his range, and have a high probability of success. If we have like a king queen, we're likely to just flat dominate dominate a lot of his range in position and make him play post flop out of position with with a hand that that's going to give his range trouble. When we three bet a king queen there, basically what we're doing is is getting him to call with the parts of his range that that dominate ours or have great equity against ours, and folding out all of his bluffs, folding out everything we dominate, which just it, it's just uh, just got to be a mistake. The time that we that we do three bet a king queen is if they're they're not folding to three bets that often and they're opening very regularly in which case we can get more money in the pot versus a range that's dominated and that's going to be that's just going to be a great great spot for us better than flatting top right table limping with the jack 10 Assume the plan is to limp raise if the six seed does raise. King eight off was going to three bet. I think it does have a little bit of value though, so opted to flat in position against this particular villain. Now we're giving him a float. The queen of clubs is a good card for a range. We have some flush draws. We have we have a decent amount of ace highs too. I think once he checks and we bet the turn, plan is going to be to bet bet 
and bet pretty big on the river as well. I, <laughs> well, we ended up checking it back in real time. I think the better plan of action is probably just a bet bet. We did run into the top of his range that time, but we want to polarize our range there and make it make it feel as if we have a lot of sevens and we have a lot of flushes and make his pocket pairs his one pair type hands really think about it limp raising the nine four suited at the bottom right no info on villain feel as if the population raises a little bit too often in this spot so did not work out get the the four bet and hopefully we just fold like a, like a good little girl all right everyone thank you so much for for watching and and taking the time to to enjoy my video again this is brad wilson from poker vip and enhanceyouredge.com signing off